So Father, again, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share with these great men and women of God. I really am, Lord, and I, and, and I know that you do all things well. Thank you for reminding me how to lay things out today and get it done and say it properly in Jesus' name. Amen, and thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Listen, I'm going to just jump right into it. I'm going to share some information of what is happening and the next steps that the enemy has already taken. People think, listen, people think that we have a lull right now that um, um, the people who are not in power, they're thinking they have won because those in power are backing off. Restrictions are being moved. People are going back to freedom. But no, you're not going back to business as usual. It is like the Bible say, there'll be some that come along and say, peace, 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 when there's no peace. They, they have other plans. So it's um, a pause to get people distracted. Remember, remember um, how the, the mass hypnosis works, right? It has to get you focused on one area so much so that uh, all of your anxieties become targeted in that way. It's no longer just general, right? So now having moved from a health crisis to now watch this, to a war crisis, a war focus, and we have to be there uh, to pray for people and stuff like that. You, you, we're gonna pray for them again today. But remember, we sit in heavenly places and we, we know all things work together for our good, right? No matter whatever the focus is. Anyway, so while people are focused here on the health crisis, then come the next crisis, the, the, um, the focus on war. While that is happening, things are being done and put in place to capture people financially and solidify and tie them down so that what the enemy has been trying to do all along will be put in place. So we don't want, we, we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. And we know that those individuals who are behind pushing everyone in a certain direction of control and manipulation, we know that is not God. We know that's not God. God, it, when, when Jesus returns, the Bible says there will be people from every nation, from every tribe and all that kind of thing. God is not into destroying all of the nations and making them into one bundle, right? No, there was a period of time when God said, whoa, it's not good for all of them to be like that. Let's divide the, the languages. Let them go out. Let the kingdom be the umbrella. But we have our differences and our approaches and our creative manner and way of doing things. It's not a one world, world universal thing because when you have a one world universal thing, what does the enemy do? come in? The antichrist comes in to sit over that one world universal thing and push people under the control of the dragon, the beast and the false prophet. So that's what the enemy is planning. And the Bible talks about how the whole world will do what wonder after the beast because some amazing things will happen. Let me point out a couple of things. Um, da -dun -da -dun -dun -dun. Sorry, just popped my dog here, hanging out here with me. I want to point out a couple of things. Um, this is from the International Conference, International Governance and Compliance Association. Did you get that? The International Govern governance and Compliance Association. And this is a transcript uh, that was taken from there. Uh, my printer marked off the date of it, but just recently, you can, you can go Google this. Remember anything I share with you, you should be able to look it up and connect the dots yourself, okay? But this is from the International you see it, the title, is it showing up? No, right here in the corner is the organization, the international organization, yes, okay? And then at the bottom here, 
it begins a discussion, okay? And what I want you to see, it talks about ESG. Do you see where I underlined it there? Uh, yes, ESG, environmental, you see that? Sustainability, social or governance. So now there's an ESG score that is already at work being put into motion and it deals with the environment. Remember climate change, um, it deals with sustainability or social issues, social justice, and it deals with governance. You got it? Environmental, sustainability, social, and governance, right? And so all of these things will be factored into your credit score for you and every organization in America. Right now, what do they look at when they look at my credit score? They look at uh, where I lived, right? Uh, my job, how uh, am I able to keep maintain a stable work environment, right? And also, uh, do I pay my bills on time? How much debt do I have, right? But now they're gonna look at your response to the environment, right? your response to sustainability or your social issues, and also governance. Also governance is how you are cooperating with those who will move you around. And also um, how that affects the rest of society. I wanna point out something here, and thank you Holy Spirit for helping me here. I wanna point out something here. When they talk about it, as we get to the middle of the document, and hopefully you can see where I started to underline there. Do you see that? What I started to underline, what is ESG? What does it entail? How did it come to the attention of today's business room? Watch this. So let um, me see, they've been really doing this for a really long time, 15 years plus, right? They've been looking for a way to hold companies accountable. They say, hey, Pastor, that's not a problem. We ought to hold companies accountable. Yes, yes. But they're also going to add on holding you accountable. See, who sets the standard for what is right and what is wrong? Think about it. Who puts the information in the books that we teach the children? Did you think about that? Recently, somebody was arguing man, we got to put in the books to teach the children how bad white people are. And white people are the only ones going around messing things up. Well, have you, have, have you read about and studied what happened? I believe it was, uh, oh, oh, what was the year? I don't want to misquote the year. But look early on in uh, history of American development when there was a move to send Americans back to Africa, you know, some of the slaves and stuff, send them back to Africa. They went back to what we know as Liberia, right? There was a return to Africa movement and they went back there. I forget how many thousands of them went back and they went back, I'm talking about black folk, went back to Africa and did to the Africans what the white people had done to them. See, when evil is in your heart, when the principles in your heart are not true to the word of God, you would do anything to any, anybody and act out in the way the devil normally does. Are, are you following that? Come on, put a two in the chat if you saw. And, and 200,000 people were killed uh, through that revolutionary process in Liberia, in Liberia. We didn't put that in the history book. See, we wanna put in the history books, the bad thing the white man has done and done some bad things. I told you about uh, Custer, did some really bad things. General Custer, Custer's last stand and all that kind of stuff and the massacre. He did some really bad things, right? Yeah, but Bible says all have sinned. We gotta keep that principle in mind. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you and I are not focused on the fact, listen to this, that people are made in the image of God, we would do anything to people. Yes, we will. 
what holds us? What, what keeps us from going out right now and killing all of our enemies and destroying everybody who doesn't look like us? Yes, the love of God constrains us, the power and passion of God. But listen to this. It says in here, I hope you can see it. I didn't underline that part. Let me see if I can, I can underline. I want you to see this. And what this, this person mentions, okay, and I just underlined, since, since the 1990s, do you see that? The 1990s, what were you and I doing back in the 1990s? We were not thinking about this, but some people were thinking about this. And so they've been thinking about a way to make this happen. And they ended up saying, it's the idea of the carrot and the stick, the carrot <laughs> enticing you and the stick behind you beating you in certain directions, right? It has evolved across the years, right? To hold companies accountable. So wait a minute, company, are you contaminating the water? Are you treating your employees right? How transparent are you? To hold them accountable, right? And so now companies, have already started virtual signaling, you know, that they are on board. I was in the store the other day. Yes, and I, I pointed out to my wife, there was a, a, a um, container for you to put your trash. On one side, it had a, a, a nice opening that said recyclables only. And on the other side, it had a nice opening that says trash. So you go to this container, you can put your recyclables on this side, your bottles and stuff like that. And on the other side, you can put your trash and your garbage. Guess what? If you took the top off, it was the same container. Yes, it was the same container. Yes, yeah, somebody's saying they had a couple of classes on ESG. This thing is rolling out. And so to affect companies pretty soon will be applied to who else and what else? Apply to churches, right? Apply to individuals, right? Apply to people who are deniers of the ability for others to control, okay? And so uh, they talked about how the, the major regulators are coming along. When, when ESG is fully implemented among our people, when ESG is fully implemented among our people, do you know you won't have access to capital right now. Oh, let me give you an example. How does it work? Russia now is in fate invading Ukraine, right? Remember they made a series of steps and then they came to a place that said, ah, oh, Visa cut Russia off. We're not gonna process any um, credit payments for you, cutting off capital, okay? Right now, do you notice? Yes, yeah, somebody said you wouldn't own nothing and be happy. That's what they're saying. They're programming people to go that way, right? Those are the kind of things being set up now. And there is a movement to get there faster. Why? Because you can see that most people have already drank the Kool-Aid and they're willing to do whatever they need to do to get by. Right now where I live, they've lifted the mask mandate for indoor areas, right? You don't have to wear the mask indoors and stuff like that. And, and really, <laughs> you didn't have to wear it anyway <laughs> indoors, but you know, they had, you know, there were exceptions and, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, you know, we went in the store, no, no sign outside that you needed the mask. 80%, maybe 70, 70 to 80% of the people who went in went in with masks on, even though they were no longer required. They had been brainwashed to the point, oh, I got to put this on, oh, and to the point that they're thinking the mask is going to protect them, all that kind of stuff going on. Wow. So they know, hey, if people have accepted it to that level, we can go ahead and move to the next thing already and get to the point where people will accept that, hey, you bet not, you bet not do certain things. You better not do certain things. No, no, no. No, you better not do certain things. You better not go to certain churches. You better not say certain things or your visa will be canceled. Your money will be canceled. This, that, and the other will be canceled. You can't get along. Can't get another car and all of that, right? 
So these things are happening, right? Already being set up and put in place. And what they're talking about here, yes, you can read the article. It's, it's nine or 10 pages here. ESG, read the articles yourself and begin to study and know what's coming down the line. Why am I telling you this? Please hear me. I am not telling you this for you and I to be afraid. No, no, no. I'm telling you and I this um, myself, you know what I'm saying? I want us to know so we can know, uh, we can see the end approaching, right? So we can make sure we're not playing games, we're getting close to God because we see the end approaching. The, the next thing on the, the list, while people are watching and focus on war, they're also moving forward with the national uh, passports that will be connected to the shots that you have received, all right? Yes, that thing is still being put. See, people think it's quiet. No, the goal of the enemy is to control, to manipulate, to direct, to push people in a certain way. You read the book of Daniel. There was a situation that happened in the book of Daniel where the king had some people advise him, right? To have everybody bow down when this horn is blowed and when the music starts, we got everybody bow down and worship this idol. Man, what was the point? You didn't have to believe it. You can, you can just go through the motions. It didn't matter. You, you can bow down and say, well, I'm really bowing down to God and God knows my heart and all that. They, they didn't care. Just you do what we tell you to do. You bow down to the idol when the music played, right? You remember when the music played, there were some guys that were like, no, we're not bowing down. And they said, oh, you, you're going to bow down or we're going to take your life. We're going to throw you in the fiery furnace. You remember that story? Yes. Well, that is happening today. The fiery furnace now is the threat of your job, right? The threat of your retirement money, the threat of all those kind of things, if you don't cooperate with where things are going. That's why you and I got to pray. We're near the end. We're near the end. I'm, I'm not here predicting dates and everything like that. No, God in his mercy may give us more time to win more people. But you and I better be ready today. Amen. Today. Here's the thing I want to say, and then I want to pray. I was asking God, what do I do, God? Because if I continue to show people what's going on, I've had some people tell me, Ah, uh, Pastor, I don't like to listen to you, man, because you're always bringing bad news. You're always talking about the bad stuff that's coming, you know? You never talk about the good stuff. But I'm bringing you current events. Yeah, but it's always bad. It's this, that, and the other. What are we going to do about it? The devil's been working on this so long. Yeah, he has been. Well before the 90s, right? Satan has been working on totally controlling human beings for at least 6,000 years of human history that we are aware of based on a biblical record, at least that. So how do you outsmart somebody who's been around for that long? Well, if you get connected up with somebody who's been around even longer and is more powerful, you can outsmart the enemy in his moves today. We can bind the enemy in the name of Jesus. We can make sure we're so locked into God that it doesn't matter what the devil is doing. He won't be able to steal your joy, right? He may be able to destroy your body, but never your soul. Amen? Yes, that's what the Bible is very clear about that. And that's where, that's where we have to get, amen? where we are locked in with God, no matter what is going on, we're locked in because God has been around longer. God actually loves us. God actually cares for us. God is watching over all of these things are taking place. God loves you. So that's why we show what the devil is doing. This is what's happening. This is around the corner. This is on the way. This is actually an ESG is actually in action. And it's just gradually moving, moving more and more in a certain direction to where people will be caught up in it. And then it comes to, ah, oh, those church people, those Christian people, those people keep saying 
that this is true and that is true. And we don't like that. Their church is splitting now, the whole denomination splitting because one group wants to modify what the Bible says and the other group is saying, we're gonna follow what Jesus said. We're gonna follow what the Bible said. They're splitting off, right? Well, the same thing is gonna be happening in our world as people go after the truth. Where, where are you gonna stay and where are you gonna land? Where are you gonna be? That's what this is about. You got it? So the, God was telling me, and I believe I should share with you, that's the only safe place to be, and I want you to hear me, the only safe place to be is to be settled in your relationship with God because none of this stuff matters at all, right? It really doesn't matter. It's nice, man, like anybody, I love driving nice cars, man, I like them. Nice cars. I saw a beautiful Porsche today. I was telling my wife, look at that Porsche. It's so be nice to drive it. I don't have one, but it'd be nice to, to drive it, right? But Porsche is not connected to my salvation, right? Love beautiful houses, man. Very modern and the, uh, the way they're laid out. Love it, love it, love it. Would like to have a palatial home overlooking the ocean and the mountains and all that kind of thing and be able to, to get up and and say hallelujah, and the, and the curtains open up, the panoramic view before me <laughs> like that, right? Would love that, don't have it. But if I had it, it would not be connected to my salvation, right? Money is good. Don't like being broke. Don't like being busted and disgusted. Money is good. The Bible talks about how wealthy Abraham was, how wealthy, you know, the, the father of our faith was, right? It tells us those things, right? Solomon and all of his wealth given to him by God. But all of the money, all of the wealth, all of the gold and silver is not connected to my salvation, right? Right. So you and I have to be clear. I have been watching and maybe you have seen some more Thank you for the good afternoon. Yes, yes. You've seen some more uh, Pastor Sunday. I think it is. Um, I believe that's, I just popped the name in the um, chat room. I believe that's how you spell his name, Sunday Elijah, at Elijah. Um, but the pastor over in Ukraine, I've been following his videos of his, his neighborhood now all burned down, having left everything. Uh, talked about how when they, they rushed off to save their lives, weren't even able to get a toothbrush, just get out and go. Um, and you and I know about traveling. Oh, I'm getting ready to go. Okay, I need this, I need that. And, and we, we leave our things safely behind. Everything gone right? Everything being wiped out, but still staying connected and close to God. Well, for you and I, we thank God we're not in that situation. And that's why I was sharing with you. And I, I don't know if God would lead me to do it again, but we want to be praying for our brothers and sisters in that situation that as, as the enemy comes in with a flood, as death and destruction is all around, that the people in there don't lose their sense, listen, of the kindness, the love and mercy of God while they're being tested in some horrible ways, horrible ways. Can you and I still be loving in an unlovable situation? And so I wanna ask you, if you would join me in prayer, um, just want to uh, begin to pray again for our brothers and sisters there in Ukraine. I trust that each of you are doing well. Uh, we've shared words of encouragement for you. Martina, let me know when you and your family, I see it again and, and it was something I thought I should mention to you. I would just like to know, I, I see your family having a large family gathering. Would you text me and let me know when that happens? Um, I just want to be in prayer and just celebrate God. This has already happened. That is great. Um, but let me know. I, I really see that for you and your family. And you're able to move among them and around them at the table and just greet and hug and minister and share 
um, God's love for them, you know, in, in the, the unique way that you know how to do it. Okay. So let's pray for our, our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Ah, dear Lord, my heart is heavy for um, those who are suffering even now and who what it looks like for many will be dying in this issue of war and ref becoming refugees because one person decided they wanted that spot of land. I don't know what the churches have done this weekend or will be doing, but God, I, I ask that you would, you would keep your people connected to your heart. For those who, um, we depend on internet service like we're communicating with right now. We're asking God um, that we would be strong to stay close to you in prayer internet or not, electricity or not, protection from bullets and bombs or not. Oh, we ask for your mercy and your grace that you will strengthen the heart of your people, that we will be strong enough, God, to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That we would just trust you, that we just trust you, that we would just trust you. Father, help us to trust you in life and Help us to trust you in death. Help us to trust you, God, that though we lose everything physically and mon monetarily, that all of our money is gone, all of our health and our strength is gone. Even, Father, even if we lose the support of people around us, that everybody's looking at us with, with knives and guns pointed at us, there's nowhere to go. God, help us to know that you are still there. Help us to know, Father, that you are a, a very present help in the time of trouble. Help us to know that you go with us into the fire. Oh, God, and if, if it becomes a time of these great men and women of God, their lives are taken, help them to know and help us to know, Lord, that not one sparrow falls to the ground, that you don't, you don't take notice. You take notice of it all. Father, I know that your heart is hurt when human beings do evil to other human beings like Cain killing Abel all over again. So we pray, Father, yes, Lord, for your movement and power. Now, listen, those listening to me, I want you to join with me. We want to bind up the, the, the work of the strong man, this spirit of death and destruction. We want it to come to a halt. We want to bind it up in the name of Jesus. So Father, we come in the name of Jesus, having covered our lives by the blood covering of Jesus Christ and using God's own authority placed in us. We take authority over the spirit of Baal, the, the queen of heaven, Jezebel, the mother of harlots, this dragon spirit, this, this evil destructive move of war, not just in Ukraine, but in other parts. We're focused right now on Ukraine, but people are being hurt and abused and lives are being taken in the name of Jesus. Oh, we lift up your word, Father, and we come against the onslaught of death in the name of Jesus. We divorce ourselves from what Baal wants to do, the molestation of children, uh, the destruction of families, the destruction of livelihood and lives, uh, the heavy discouragement. We, we divorce ourselves from Baal's agenda in any shape, form that it comes in, anything that makes the devil happy, we divorce ourselves from that in the name of Jesus. And we commit to the work of the Lord Jesus Christ in every way. Father, we thank you that your angels that excel in strength are with our brothers and sisters there in Ukraine. And we, we thank you that they, they have a sense of knowing that somebody's praying with them and walking through there. Yes, Lord, I thank you that when Stephen was being stoned in the New Testament, the Bible says Stephen was able to look up 
and see that Jesus was standing up and watching what he was going through. And I pray, Lord, that your men and women of God, whatever they're going through, know Jesus, that you are proud, know Jesus, that you got a home for them, know Jesus, that eternity is going to certainly make up the difference. Oh, we pray that their faith will not fail, and we pray that our faith would not fail. We come against those who are standing in the way of evangelism right now. And we thank you for a great revival, a great harvest coming. Yes, Lord, a return to the people of God. Those things that the devil has stolen must be returned seven times more. And we thank you for that return coming in the direction of the people of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. Amen. You got it. You got it. So we're going to continue. Listen, we're going to continue. As somebody shared, they studied ESG. It's in the banks. Soon it'll be connected to the credit and to the national uh, uh, passports that will be changing uh, based on other requirements for control. But you and I will be continuing to lift up Jesus because what will it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul. No, we're going to win people for Christ. We're going to love them to life. Let me say this real quick before I go. Got to say this. Somebody was sharing with me a commentator on TV on one of the, the talk shows. She fell on her face, right? And they said it was on live TV. I haven't seen it. I saw um, a steel picture. I haven't seen the video, but I've seen uh, the caption uh, where it took place. And uh, somebody said, oh, that's God getting her back for a statement she said. And I, I thought about it. And I was like, mm, maybe it's God, maybe it's not. My sense, listen to this, is that it's not God. Because God draws us with loving kindness. See, every, every time I said something bad about God, he didn't slam my face to the ground. No, God draws us with loving kindness. That was probably the devil because when we side up with evil against God, we open the door for the enemy to come in and then the enemy will come in and push people down, do all those kind of things. God, God wants to bless her. And I pray that the people of the church, when they see her, when they make comments about her, will talk about the mercy and the grace of God and not be used by the enemy to slam people. No, I'm, I'm believing God for his mercy to touch the generals, in high places who, are does, does, who have orders to, to kill and murder hundreds of thousands of people. I'm believing God to touch their hearts and turn it around. I'm believing God to move and allow his angels to move and demonstrate the power of God like never before, the mercy and the grace of God. And I'm asking that you join me in that. Before we get off, I wanna thank you for praying for me. I've been able to make some progress spiritually. I still have to get um, the venue uh, for our meeting for the gathering of men. I thank God that he's put together. The team is coming together. Uh, we got Dr. Razim helping us and we'll be meeting soon to get the, uh, the media part going. I have the musician and the worship um, minister in place. I need the venue and some other pastors to help me. So please pray for that. Thank you so much. Um, your prayers have been making it happen and progress is being made. Listen, I love you to life. I look forward to a time when we can get together and share more personally. And please do your research, connect the dots, right? Do your research and connect the dots and uh, let's stay in touch. When God begins to fulfill things that I've ministered in your life, let me know. I would like to keep track of that and uh, as my own growth and understanding what I saw and sense and what God is doing so I can be more accurate in my presentations, okay? Yes, thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Love you to life. Love you to life. Take care.